Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church and School. Uh, glad that you are here. My name is Pastor Kendall Meyer. I'm the senior pastor here. And on behalf of the Dale Gherkin family, we thank you for being here to provide uh, encouragement and support. And your presence means a lot to the family. So thank you for, uh, be, for being here. I have a couple things that I want to be sure that you, um, that you remember. Uh, we do have a luncheon immediate, uh, we will have a luncheon after the, uh, after the committal um, out at the, uh, the burial site. And uh, so uh, if you are going to be coming with us out to the committal, or if you so choose, you can wait here until we come back. But we will have a luncheon after, um, after the committal. Also, I want you to look at the service real quick. Um, as you look at the service, uh, you will see in the service that all the hymns that we're going to be singing are, um, are um, listed in here. So you don't need to use your hymn book. Uh, so you can just uh, go ahead and uh, use those. Uh, use those that you have in your uh, service folder. Also, I just wanted to pay a, uh, point your attention to page two. So if you go to page two, down at the bottom, there's the prayer of the day. We've been having some challenges with our printer. And uh, so at the bottom, you see where it said people, and it says amen. And then it goes on to say, and lead us not into temptation. Uh, the printer had moved that from the Lord's Prayer that goes, uh, that will be said later on in the service. So I just wanted to let you know that uh, we will uh, stop the prayer of the day at where it's a people say amen. And that's where we'll stop there and then move on to the scripture reading. So I just wanted to point that out uh, to you for our time together. Our opening hymn is uh, hymn uh, 770. It's one of the hymns that the family had chosen. And um, it's a reminder for us of what a friend that we have in Jesus. in Jesus all our sins and grief to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer oh what peace and offer for foot. oh what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We are weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a solace there. We continue on with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters in Christ, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. 
If we have been united with him in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. And this morning we celebrate the crown of eternal life that has been granted to Dale Gherkin, who through his baptism was united with Christ, united with him in death, and now is united with him in his resurrection. As the family and I gathered together to plan the service, uh, the family chose Psalm 121. And this is our responsive psalm, so we will respond back and uh, forth to this particular psalm. And the psalm is about where do you put your trust? Who do you put your trust in? I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? He will not let your foot slip. He who washes over you will not slumber. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. We pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. We give you special thanks for the faith and eternal salvation that you have given to your beloved servant, Dale. Grant that we also may be faithful to death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lived and reigned with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever, and we say together, Amen. Our first scripture reading that the family had uh, chosen in our time together as we were planning the service comes to us from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. And here we see in this particular passage the promise that we have of being a children, a children of God. John writes, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God? And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him because we shall see him as he is. Our second reading is our gospel reading from John chapter 6. And in this particular reading, we have the wonderful promise of eternal life for all who trust in Jesus. Jesus tells us, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. We have the opportunity for us to sing this hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. If you look at the bottom of that page, you'll see that the refrain begins there. It continues on to the next page. If you turn the page, it continues on on, this, on the next page. And uh, so we will be singing those two verses of Great is Thy Faithfulness as we give thanks to God for His faithfulness to us, even in the midst of our grief. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. 
There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou hast ever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Lonnie and Sherry, where are you, Sherry? There you are. Okay, Shane. And family and friend of Dale Gherkin. Those of you that are here in person, those of you that are joining us online, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Heavenly Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus our Christ. Dale Gherkin was born on January 9, 1938, in Fort Dodge. He was raised and educated in Colander and graduated from Colander High School. On December 24, 1958, Dale was united and married to Judy Shaw at St. Paul Lutheran Church. Throughout Dale's life, he enjoyed numerous hobbies. In his younger days, Dale used to race dirt track stock cars, doing all his mechanic work. He could fix anything. Dale and Judy enjoyed going to square dances, I would love to have seen him dance, and the neighborhood card club for many years. They farmed together for over 58 years and eventually settled on the family farm south of Fort Dodge. Dale also enjoyed flying remote control airplanes, building several of his own, and became reputable enough to repair RC planes others had crash landed. He was inspired to get his private pilot license and became an accomplished pilot. This led to Dale buying and owning his own plane and have it stored in the hangar at his farm. The couple spent their winters first in Arizona and then Texas for over 20 years, where Dale enjoyed rounds of golf with his friends. Dale was a member of St. Paul Lutheran Church all of his life, where he served his congregation by being a lay minister and being on various boards. Dale loved for a long time uh, Dale's love for farming led him to his most recent hobby of restoring antique tractors and being a longtime member of the Des Moines River Valley Antique Tractor and Engine Club. During this time, he had restored over 30 various antique tractors. He was also a drainage trustee for 37 years. But Dale's most important hobby was his family, and he was always there when you needed him, whether it was advice or a helping hand. I began my ministry here at St. Paul in November of 2019, and then COVID hit. And because of COVID, I had not had the opportunity to be able to uh, meet Dale until a little over a year ago when he called one day and said, Pastor, are you still wearing that mask in the service? And we said, no, um, we've stopped doing that uh, quite a few months before. Oh, good, then I can come to church again. And so right away, the next weekend, he was in church. He would always sit over on this side uh, in the pews over here uh, when he would come to be here. 
And it was during that time that I got to know him a little bit, um, but especially over the last eight months, got to really spend some time with him. But also, I was able to talk to some other people that knew him, that had spent time with him, and here are some things that I learned about him. He was a man who was willing to help anyone, whether it was someone in the family, whether it was a neighbor, whether it was a friend, even a stranger he was willing to help. And the thing that I heard over and over again is that he never charged anyone. It was just who he was. He wanted to just be able to help if he could. I also learned that he was the kind of guy who saw that everything got done, that whatever it was, whether it was in a meeting or whether it was an activity or a project, he made sure that it would got done, but he never took credit for it. He never said that he was the one that was in charge. No, 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 no. No, even though he was the one that made sure it got done, he never would take credit. It was not, it was not who he was. He wasn't interested in taking charge. For instance, if you, uh, the buildings that are out at the fairgrounds, he, had, uh, he was instrumental. He was right in the middle of getting those things built and getting those things ready. But yet he wasn't willing to say that I had a hand in it. He never wanted to call attention to himself but he also wanted to be able to be sure that the projects got done and things were accomplished. I heard that many times in talking with different people. I also was told that when I talk about the Des Moines River Valley antique tractors, I need to also remember that it's the engine club too. I have to keep in mind the whole thing. And that was one of his loves. He loved that club. And he made a lot of connections in that club and worked with a lot of different people in that club. Anybody here a part of that club? Anybody here a part of that club? You guys are? Okay. So the opportunity to be a part of the club, he made a lot of connection there because it was something that he loved. That's why I put this particular uh, picture up here because I thought that that would be a good background to, as a reminder for one of the loves that he had in his life. Another phrase that I heard from other people is this, two words, always there. He was always there. Whether it was a meeting, he was always there. Whether it was an event, he was always there. Whether it was a family activity, he was always there. Anything that, any, anything that there was that went on, he was always there. That you could trust that his presence would be there, that he would be present. And then everybody told me about how mechanical he was. How he knew, uh, he knew antique tractors, he was uh, the most man mechanical man that uh, a lot of people have ever met. In fact, I was told that he could work on an antique tractor or even in a Minneapolis Moline tractor, he could do it blindfolded because he knew it so well that he was able to, uh, to do that and to figure out what the problem is very quickly and to give good advice to others that might have had challenges with their tractors. In fact, he was so mechanically inclined that he could look at a machine or he could even look at an engine or he could look at a project that had been created by someone else. He could look at it, he would memorize it, and then he would go home and build it himself from memory. The ability for him to do that is astounding. Like he'd be able to do it by memory. I also, talk, I also heard about his love for flying. That he loved to fly. Not just the remote control airplane, but also he loved to have his pilot license and be able to fly. 
some of the people that I talked to said, well, you know what, I never really went up in the plane with him because I knew that if I go up in the plane with him, he'd do all these tricks and everything, and I, it just would feel uncomfortable. Something that uh, uh, they talked about, that just love. In fact, he had his own runway, right? Right on his uh, property, had his own hangar. He took care of his own plane. He had the whole ball and wax when it came to that but something that he so enjoyed doing. But most important was his family. Family, he loved his family, cared for his family, cared for you, Lonnie, and for you, Sherry. In fact, in the last conversation that I've had with him, it was about you too, and about how much he loved you too, and how much he cared about you too, and how much he was glad that he was able to serve you and to help you and to be with you. And also for the rest of you, he's proud of the grandkids, he's proud of the things that you guys have accomplished. It was great conversations that we've had. And whenever we got together, he would always talk about his family and the importance of his family. But the one word, I shared with this with the family last night, but the one word that comes up over and over again when I talk to many different people, even when you read the obituary, when you think about Dale, you think about the word faithful. We had that hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And the reason why we can say that he was faithful, because he was faithful to his family, he was faithful to his friends. He was faithful to his co-workers. He was faithful to his church. He cared about his church. And the reason why we can say that is because he served a God who was faithful to him. That faithfulness that God had for him began when Dale was baptized on January 30th of 1938. And when he was baptized, God reached into his life through the water and the word and said, you are now my child. All the promises that I have for you, all the promises that I have for you, they belong to you now because you are part of my family. And that's why we have this Paul that covers the casket because it reminds us that through the waters of baptism, the Dale the child of God. But you know what? It was in June 8th of 1952 that Dale was confirmed. He was confirmed at St. Paul Lutheran Church in the old building. Had the opportunity for him to come up in front of family and friends and the congregational members and to say that baptism that I received, that faith that I received in my baptism, that is my faith. And that is what I believe on. That is what I'm going to hold on to for the rest of my life. And we saw that as he passed that down to his family. We talked about the faithfulness that he had in church, the faithfulness that he had in, in the old church. I was told that the Gherkin family and some of the other family, they would always sit on the right side up in front, right, right there, right up in front. It's where they would, uh, they would sit. And an opportunity to, to know that the rest of the congregation knew that that's where the family sat. The faithfulness of attending week in and week out to be part of worship. And to receive the very body and blood of Jesus Christ in, with, and under the bread and the wine through the Lord's Supper. You see, that was so important to Dale because Dale knew he was not perfect. We all know that Dale was not perfect. He would get upset. He'd get frustrated. He'd get disgusted. He wasn't perfect. But yet, Dale worshipped a perfect God and believed in Jesus Christ as his Savior. He believed that Jesus truly did come down to this earth that he was born in a manger in Bethlehem, that he believed that Jesus lived a perfect life here on this earth. He believed also that Jesus had taught 
and he preached and he healed. But more importantly, that Jesus would go to a cross. To go to a cross so that all of Dale's sin would, would be placed upon that cross. So that when Jesus said, it is finished, and he died, that Jesus had accomplished everything through his perfect life so that Dale could be forgiven of all of his sins. Something that was reminded of him oh, every time he came up to receive communion, when I would give him that bread and that wine, the body and blood of Jesus that he would be reminded once again that, yes, he is a forgiven child of God. And because of that, he was faithful in working for the church. He worked as a lay minister. He was a respected elder in the congregation. He also served on many other boards. And a lot of the members that are here in the church that I talk to, they remember his faithfulness as he was here in worship. But you know what? Dale would want you to know that the faithfulness that he experienced in God being faithful to him and the forgiveness that he had received because of the baptism being part of a child of God and receiving the promises that come from the cross and the empty tomb. He would want each and every one of you to know that that faithfulness and those promises and those blessings are for you too. That Jesus Christ went to a cross, not just for Dale, but also for you too. That through all of our sins and all of our falling short of what God would have us do, that Jesus lived and died for you. That Dale would want you to know that God is faithful to you, even in the midst of our grief. That God is faithful to each and every one of us. Dale would want you to know that your sins have been taken away that you're as white as snow, as white as this Paul, that before God's eyes you are as white as snow because of what Jesus had done for you. Because you know what? There's going to be a day when each and every one of us are also going to be called home. And Dale would want to be able to be with you, to see you coming in to heaven. And Dale will be up there. He'll be waiting. And when, when you come in, you're going to be able to see Jesus Christ face to face. But also Dale will be there. And he'll say, come on, come with me. You won't believe the tractor they have up here. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all of our understanding keep our hearts and our minds and the one true faith until life everlasting. Amen. Gary and Patty are going to go ahead and play for us as a solo, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. When we been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love 
amazing grace through men knee dangers toils and snares i have already come to his grace that brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home my chains are gone i've been set free my god my savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace my chains are gone i've been set free my god my savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace unending love amazing grace that's for you dale we pray God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lived, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We say together, Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would hear us as we pray the prayer that your Son had taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give each and every one of you, even in the midst of your grief, his peace. Amen. We continue on with, um, this is Dale's favorite hymn, It's How Great Thou Art. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to, uh, to, uh, to sing and to give thanks for how great our God is. How great thou art. My God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the hands thy worlds have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. But when we think that God is Son not sparing, send him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burdens gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin we stand in honor of the family then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art 
how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, O oh my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art.